This summer, warfare came to the grounds of Radley College. The snap, crackle and pop of blank ammunition and coloured smoke canisters was the Army's contribution to Services Day, an event whose purpose is, quite simply, to recruit, not only from Radley, but from any schools in the area who could make the journey. But catching them young has always been a successful ploy of the armed forces. The public schools are important to the services, but so are the services to the public schools. The Ministry of Defence will give almost £1,500 each year to an officer or ranker to help him put his child through boarding school. 9,000 officers and 4,000 other ranks are helped in this way. It costs the taxpayer £32 million a year. The relationship is nicely illustrated at Radley College where 47 of the 600 fathers are serving or former officers, and from where, one in 14 Radleyans go on to one of the three services. Radley also has a combined cadet force, compulsory until a boy has passed his proficiency. A quarter of the school is in the army section, and another quarter is split between the Navy and the RAF. Some like the CCF, but Hugo Chapman certainly does not. I, I hate the CCF, and I repeat, hate, because I really loathe it. But we have to do it on Wednesday afternoon. When Wednesday comes along, there's a sort of sickening dread when one wakes up in the morning, because one has to pull on your trousers, which hurt, and your prickly sweater, and your rough shirt. Alan, I really would get out of the way if I were you. You're and you have to trouble. be bossed around by sort of NCOs. You know, people you don't respect at all. Two six. And you do things that seem absolutely pointless, like tying ropes and learning navigation. Things that I'll never ever need. There's a, a very strong feeling, which is shared by the armed forces, that any activity which is just plain boring is no good. And the armed forces do look on the CCF as not a recruiting agency, but an agency which is going to um, sustain interest where it exists and assist people who may want to go in the services. Because they do feel that via subjecting people to extreme conditions one way and another, the sort of qualities which would be important in a fighting man can be brought out. You've got four round top pegs there. You change when you get in the CCF. You have to take your hands out of your pockets and you have to look smart and how to salute the uniforms. I hate it, is all I can say. Oh, hands. English literature is littered with the biographies of famous men who claim to have been miserable at public school. And if not miserable, most boys go through a difficult two years, known at Radley as the Middle Passage or the Dark Tunnel of Adolescence. Hugo Chapman is in the middle of that tunnel. It's dark in front and dark behind, and particularly bloody in the middle, because Hugo has to attend one CCF camp, and to his disgust, he's put his name down for canoeing and fell walking in Scotland. I don't, I, don't, I don't know why I put my name I I saw his wonder, kind of toss and turn my bed, think why I did, especially as I draw nearer to the whole affair. I, I don't really know why. Keep the other end down a bit. Just lift them up. Hello, thanks. The, the typical Navy, dull, sort of boring person is... Um, the one who will excel in the dank tents and the general bloodiness of the whole affair, while I will suffer and swear and s sweat and spit and kick and be generally pretty bloody to everybody, I think. Would you like to lose that somewhere in the back? Oh, I mean, the side of the seat. No, don't hang on to the handle. If you hang on to the handle, the door will never shut. 
Who has moved the car key? Hey, look, you... Oh, that's right, I found it. Yeah. We've got some pretty fair rogues around, and people who are in a, the environment of the school will tend to be always trying to play it off against authority and so on and so forth. And one never quite knows what's going to happen when you get those sort of people out in the wilds. On the other hand, if it, if it works right, very often they produce the best company and the most lively sort of party. And the party which gets stuck into its hills and its canoes more than those who are less spirited and uh, less anti-establishment. Up the M6, squeezed into the college Land Rover and trailer, seven canoes, rations, cooking stoves, camping equipment, eight boys and one master, John Dalton, who teaches classics, but who for the next seven days is receiving service pay as Lieutenant Commander John Dalton, Royal Naval Reserve, bracket CCF. They pitched camp on the banks of Loch Tay in Perthshire. John, yeah? I should stay in bed while we cook some breakfast for a bit, I think. It's nasty. I think that it is very <coughs> important, in some ways, for many of our boys to discover that fairly uh, basic food and cold and damp and generally really thoroughly unpleasant conditions don't in any way need to impinge on one's enjoyment and to learn that it is possible to be uncomfortable as I frequently am myself on this sort of trip without feeling that the whole thing is a misery and, and many boys who come to Radley are the sort of people who live pretty sheltered lives in pretty comfortable areas and who don't know this. And if we can help them to discover this, then we may have taught them something which enables them one way or another to get more fun out of life in ways that they would never have dreamt possible. So a week of roughing it begins. Seven days in Scotland that might prove the making or the breaking of Hugo Chapman. Now, the general aim, as oh. we've all got out. Where's this nasty oh, bit? God. The general aim is that you see where there's a whole lot of waterfally things across the middle? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, to the right of that and up a bit, there's a cliff under which the water's very close to the edge and where we couldn't actually fish you out. Um, let's go down. You don't go right on the other side of the island. No, you don't go on the other side of the island because you won't get round that way. So let's we're left-hand side on your canoe. So it's left-hand side all the way. Yeah, let's go down and start over up at the top and walk down. Right -hand side no, it's left-hand left -hand side as you're going downhill. This is it. This is it. <laughs> Live happy, die young. <laughs> Live unhappy, die young. If you want to go over it, you have to come down, well, obviously, where you come down. Yeah. And then... There's a lot of self-discipline is required, and one is asking people to do things which are, in many cases, very frightening for them, particularly canoeing down rapids. is a very frightening experience for those who haven't done any before, and jumping in and out of icy rivers to rescue canoes is physically a very uh, exhausting and pretty painful operation. What you've got to be careful of is getting swept sideways onto that rock. What about the rock? You go. Well, that's why. That's why I think you may be better coming straight on. Use that rock not to get You'll go over that. At this stage, the boys are naturally apprehensive, for the water they will soon enter is defined in the canoeist's bible as grade two to three. That is 
fairly vicious whirls, cross currents and eddies with treacherous stoppers. A stopper is a wave that flows upstream. The first day will be the worst day. The first day can uh, That's That is going to be the really bad day. I'm not that good a canoeist and I'm, I am actually scared. I might get hurt. Now it's Hugo Chapman's turn. Well done. See you around the corner when Julian's caught up with you. Hugo is about to come face to face with his coldest and wettest fears. on there and we'll see what we can do. Bad luck. Well, if you get swept past, come into the edge again. I shouldn't go into the middle before you have to. Think to the right a bit. <coughs> completely, then we can get two halves out of the river. Well, the alternative would be to take him round the other way, pull the bars round since it's snapped. Now, can we have we got enough rope to get round down over here? Yeah. We're drifting round into this. All right, we're bringing round in here. Yeah, I think we could take it in two halves. I don't think it'll be any harder to mend in two halves. It's already in two halves, but the plastic. Right. John Dalton is nicknamed the Admiral, and fortunately, the Admiral knows all about salvage and repairs to sunken wrecks. These craft are homemade in his garage. With resin and rolls of fiberglass, he'll weld the severed stern to the severed prow. Right, so. Right, get changed where necessary. Hugo can come and collect the other bit of canoe, or some paddles or something for over there, please. Then we get a brew on. 
there. Whose boots are they? Well, why are you wearing them then? Uh, uh, I think it's my boots over there. Well, go and find. No, Hugo, go and find your own boots. Because we get in absolute shambles if we start wearing everybody else's clothes. Well, up, Bunny. Feel like a new man out there. Did you actually crash around? Didn't you go? Yeah. Didn't you go through the deep bits? Did you just sort of go? I anywhere? just didn't go any. And you know, the admiral he says he can go down <laughs> backward ferry glide. It's an absolute fantasy. I, I couldn't even control myself. I'm using backward ferry glide. Oh, Josie came through, no problem. Sam. Yeah. Uh, are you drying? Yeah. Because I think the brew would be fine. Yeah, I'll help him, sir. Oh God. It took two hours to bond the fore to the aft, and some time to set, so that it wouldn't spring a leak amidships. show you how fast to go, therefore you should be with me. When it's your turn to lead, I'll tell you where to go. The answer is somewhere straight up that hill. And you, predictably, are going, or trying to go, far, far too fast, as you would just kill yourself. Left, right, left, right, left, right is about the right speed. Um, aim up this dike, will you? Following in the footprints as far as possible. Yeah, cross a bit. Oh, straight. you're showering us. Well, that's just too bad. Unfortunately, gravity takes its toll. The second part of the week they spent at an approximate angle of 45 degrees on the fells not far from Balquidder, in the lovely Rob Roy country around Ben Cruachan, which in Gaelic means the mountain like a haystack. Second up here. Oh, it's so fabulous, so you really don't want to just immediately dash off it. It's a real oh. bit of fun, I think. The bucky's down. A superb picture of you, which is absolutely nothing at all except about that much of a hat. Yeah, just really yeah. We, we were about no. mad, <laughs> mad <laughs> pissing you about. You know. the paper if you want any, but I shouldn't uh, buy too many. Is that well, we had to put complete sequence in, didn't we? You, you know, you know. Hugo, looking, Hugo looking brave. It's all very easy. 
Hugo, Hugo going Hugo in for splash, even though he's monstrous <laughs> out of focus. Thanks. Hey, that was quite good, good there, actually. Actually. So, so my, mom, my mom got thoroughly sick and we still doing this. How brave you were. How brave and manly and generally oh, tough. I can't work out with Charles now. He was quite good, he was serious. He was trying to Have you got a minute? A minute? Yeah. For me? Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> This invitation to a heart-to-heart -heart has arisen because Hugo's mother has written a worried letter to the warden, setting out how difficult Hugo has become at home. He just seemed uh, to shut himself away and uh, not wish to do anything, not wish to participate, except to up, um, upset people, mainly his mother, which was good baiting uh, ground, and uh, to a certain extent his sister, and he seemed to be rather miserable. Well, it doesn't help family life if you have one member who's extremely dissatisfied and bored and can't do anything about it, and they won't cooperate. They won't do things with the family or initiate anything themselves. I mean, he just was isolated. And in Scotland, for instance, and the sort of thing that I wrote was, well, here was a bloke, I expected he'd be in bloody pain, and I expected to say this bloke is a shit, frankly. We are, that's very kind of you, sir. And this is what I expected to end up saying, because the general sort of impression that one gets of you around here is pretty much that sort. What, course, why is that? Not from me, but from the sort of people in authority that one talks to. What, in common? Yeah. And if, they, if you mention H. Chapman, they say, yuck. Well, those who don't know you very well do. It just seemed a bit of a shame that... Yeah. In Scotland, one saw a bloke who I thought was a bloody good bloke. But yet around Radley, he didn't, doesn't give the impression, now this may be Radley's fault. I don't like the whole public school, or I suppose educational thing, kick at all. In no way. But yet you've got to be educated, and you oh, accept, I, I, the, accept I, the necessity. But I, right. I, don't, I, don't, I don't like it so much. I, don't, I sort of don't like this setup. And if I was sort of putting on my schoolmaster's hat, yeah. I'd say, Chapman. Go and find yourself some things to do. Yeah. Get interested. Get involved. Get busy. Play well, games. All the... that sort of. I mean, that... uh, and anyone normally says that sort of thing. And I'm not saying mm. that to you at all, uh, because that would be pointless. If you're not a great scholar or a uh, sportsman, one is you know, here. One is left very much to uh, you know your own devices. Your own devices. Yes. Uh, that, and that's probably why Common Room doesn't like me, or... or some members Some of members of Common Room don't like me, or, or the HPs probably don't like <coughs> me, because I, I, I do, do not like being pushed around, which is uh, something one has to live with if one is to uh, survive at public school. The thing is that I want to get away from school, and then when I'm at home, I want to get away from home, which is... Uh, so I'm always glad to go back to school. Their holidays become... For me, I, I don't, I don't mind them because uh, I'm perfectly happy, you know, being bloody minded to uh, your mum, to my mum or anybody else. But, uh, but it's not a very, uh, I mean, it charitable way of living. Yeah, right. And I, I become, I mean, bloody bored all day, every day, relieved by nothing. I mean, I hate being nagged at, and my mum was a great nagger. And so it's a sort of, you know, that the whole thing. I mean, I mean, it obviously leads to a lot of friction. I mean, getting nagged at all the time and not doing it. Which must make holidays pretty miserable. So it makes it miserable for her a lot more than it does for me. There's nothing. Uh, there's nothing that can be done either here. I don't think nothing can be done here. Or at home. I mean, I don't, I don't know why she wrote to Dennis. Well, because, presumably, because she was very upset. Just she's sort of frustrated by the whole situation and, and the fact that I, I just refuse to do things that she's, you know, she sees as, uh, you know, vital for... Family so, happiness. Family happiness. So, in effect, um, because you're there and they argue about you, are you not helping them, as far as they're concerned, in their relationship to each other? No, I mean, uh, that is it. Which I mean, is a very sad thing, actually. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, one obvious way is for you to, to make sure that you have as many things to yeah. do to take you out of the house in the holidays, because, I mean, in many ways, presumably, if you sort of sit back and think about it, you feel, not in your stroppy moments when you're having an argument with your mum, but you, if you think about it, you feel, well, gosh, here am I, and I'm responsible in some way for upsetting things here. Um, yeah. Would it be helpful if Dennis or your tutor or somebody suggested to your parents they do let you shoot off in the holidays for some substantial period of time? Yeah, I, I would like that a lot. I mean, coming from Dennis, because, I mean, my parents, you know, they sort of Dennis had cut off, kind of, you know, right hand, they probably did it, so um, that would be fine. Coming from him, if he felt that was all right. Well, look, Hugo, if you'd like, I will motivate the great white chief to yeah. uh, write a suitable letter. Well, I'm rather glad I didn't have to see this great man himself, actually, because I was on the journey now. Yeah, I, I, it was inevitable, I think, that she'd write. Because he's a great one for writing and all that. In any case, we will see what we can do, and we will... Um... Right, or report yeah. back as well. Well, right. I hope he writes a nice letter. He will do. He's very good at writing letters. Alex. Alex. Yep. Where are you going? To say? It would be presumptuous to say that Hugo Chapman is any further out of the dark tunnel of adolescence. But a year has passed, and in that time, Hugo has roused himself to pass eight O levels and win a drama competition. And a flurry of letters between parents and school did result in his getting a job on a building site in Hitchin in the holidays, where he lived in digs with what he calls ordinary people. But he still feels cut off in a middle-class home and in a middle-class school. I haven't changed my uh, outlook towards Radley at all. I, I just, uh, just now know I have to spend my time here. I think what gave them that thing was that I got good A-level results and I did did well there. I, th I think I was, I didn't do that because I was a reformed character. I did that because I wanted to get good A-level results. Nothing really to do with um, the fact that I had a better outlook on Radley or anything of that sort. I think people who here tend to forget that, that they'll be brand if the rest of their life is a public school boy. I, I, yeah, I think that's one of the main things I don't like. I don't like being involved with something that I, I despise and think should be stopped. I wish I could go somewhere where I could meet different people with different views, different backgrounds, and they had different ideas about things. The whole idea of rally is to mould you into the sort of person that they like. I mean, I want to develop and not be developed by other people. <laughs>